Uh, Mike, uh, interesting result here. I assume this was uh, Netflix uh, U.S. based subscribers. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've been getting a lot more questions about an increasingly intense competitive environment that could unfold here over the next six weeks with both uh, Disney and Apple streaming services launching by mid-November. So, yeah, it was domestic uh, subscribers, 3,000 subscribers in two separate surveys. And as you mentioned, we found that about uh, 75% of Netflix subs are not expecting to subscribe to either Disney or Apple. And importantly, for those that do expect to subscribe to one of the new services, most of them said they'll subscribe to both Netflix and the new competing services, not not one or the other. So I'd say the conclusion here is these competing services do kind of, you know, cast a cloud of uncertainty uh, over the stock in the near term, uh, but we really aren't seeing any evidence that they'll have a material negative impact on actual Netflix market share. I guess you could flip it around and say that, uh, you know, a quarter of people uh, which is 60 million subscribers to Netflix in the U.S., uh, are saying that they are probably going to subscribe to uh, Apple or Disney or both. Yeah, I mean, I think that kind of speaks to the idea that, um, you know, uh, we're going to see more and more subscribers that are um, using both Netflix and an additional service as consumers just spend more on streaming offerings in place of traditional TV subscriptions. So it makes sense that we'll continue to see as more of these streaming services become available, uh, more of those uh, subscribers adding on and, and layering on additional services. Now, if you gain some comfort here that many people are not planning, or really hard to find a lot of people who do say they plan to cancel Netflix, uh, I wonder if that really does um, kind of take away a lot of the overhang that's been uh, on the stock right now, simply because part of the argument is, look, they, they're now the highest price service in the market, and it seems like price increases are probably not going to happen for a while. And, uh, and then just the idea that Netflix no longer has that kind of exclusivity premium. It's not the only stock you can buy to play video streaming anymore. Yeah, I think, you know, the way we're looking at it from kind of a stock action perspective is we do like Netflix long term and we continue to expect, as I said, minimal kind of competitive impact. But there, there is no question that some investors are, are going to take a bit of a wait and see approach to the impact of this competition and, you know, the potential for market share loss. So that could keep some people on the sidelines until at least, you know, Netflix reports uh, Q4 results early next year. And at that point, we'd have more clarity on any real potential impact from the service um, that from these competitive offerings. And hopefully that clarity would result in, you know, less concern around potential market share loss. And do you hear a lot of concern just about the return on investment on the content spend for, for Netflix? I mean, look, they spend a lot of money on The Irishman. This uh, Martin Scorsese movie is getting amazing reviews. Maybe it's going to win a bunch of Oscars. That could be great for Netflix in terms of public relations. On the same, at the same time, they spent half a billion dollars on Seinfeld after just saying that it was no big deal. They lost The Office and Friends. So, uh, you know, do you, do you feel like people are wondering just exactly what bang they're getting for their buck? Yeah, you know, that's been just a, a, a question that we've had over year, years and years with Netflix as to, you know, whether or not the ROI on the content spend makes sense and the increasing cost of content. And we, we expect that we'll continue to see them spending more on content, but that's kind of, you know, how the Netflix flywheel is, is uh, meant to work, is that they add new content, which attracts new subscribers, and those new subscribers are able to, to fund additional new content. And at some point, you reach, you know, a level, and they're getting closer to it, where you're kind of at more of a, a maintenance level of content spend. You have enough content to kind of attract and retain uh, most of your subscribers. And, you know, they're, they're getting closer to that, but the, to the extent additional competing services continue to uh, come out, that there will be some, you know, ongoing increase in content spend forever to some degree.